For a defendant to be held criminally responsible for murder, the prosecution must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant is both the actual and proximate cause of the victim's death. In Kibb v. Henderson, the Second Circuit considered whether a trial court's failure to instruct the jury on causation violated a criminal defendant's right to due process. Barry Kibb and Roy Crawl met George Stafford in a bar. Stafford was drunk. When Kibb and Crawl saw Stafford flash some cash, they made a plan to rob him. They agreed to give Stafford a ride, but instead took his money and abandoned him along a dark rural road, partially unclothed and without his glasses or coat. The temperature was near zero, and blowing snow significantly diminished visibility. Snowbanks lined the road. As Stafford sat helplessly in the dark in the middle of a traffic lane, a speeding pickup truck struck and killed him. Kibb and Crawl were arrested for Stafford's murder. The relevant state statute provided that a person is guilty of second-degree murder when, quote, under circumstances evincing a depraved indifference to human life, he recklessly engages in conduct which creates a grave risk of death to another person and thereby causes the death of another person, unquote. At trial, Kibb's lawyer argued that the pickup driver's negligence and not Kibb's conduct caused Stafford's death. The prosecution countered that Stafford's death was foreseeable and wouldn't have happened if not for Kibb's actions. Neither side asked the trial judge to instruct the jury on causation, but the judge read the statute to the jury. The judge instructed the jury that a person acts recklessly with respect to a particular result if the person consciously disregards a substantial and unjustifiable risk that the result will occur. Kibb was convicted of grand larceny, robbery, and second-degree murder. The New York Court of Appeals affirmed Kibb's conviction. Thereafter, Kibb filed a petition for a writ of habeas corpus in the United States District Court for the Northern District of New York. In the petition, Kibb named Robert Henderson, superintendent of the prison he was being detained at, as defendant. The district court dismissed Kibb's petition. Kibb appealed to the Second Circuit. 